Hi everyone, welcome to the preview and early hands-on look trying to skirt around the Coffee Lake NDA of me doing the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. So we'll start at the beginning and with the box open and I am going to bypass the uh, motherboard initially but obviously we'll come back to it so you get your fan sticker pack so uh, this that we have tried it is pretty much it is the size of a passport as well um, cable identifiers you can wrap them around your um, let's say your SATA cables it could be whatever Got some other stickers on there. You do get your, your manual with the driver CD and what we'll call the normal stuff. And then inside, you've got your IO shield. You get yourself some Aorus branded Velcro. These can be good for keeping your power supply cables in check. The screws there are gonna be for your M.2s. There's an SLI bridge. There is uh, an RGBW extender. Now it's RGBW, so it has a fifth pin. You can still use it with normal RGB cables, but with the dedicated white, what that can mean is you, um, uh, you can get RGBW and RGBUV cables. Cable Mod do make them as well, and it means that you can have a dedicated white if you wanted white, and you can have a dedicated UV. You normally have UV or the white on the, the extra channel. Then you have a very, very long um, scent thermal sensor. I mean, that's immense. That must be about 60 centimeters. Long. Oh, there's two. It's got a couple of very long thermal sensors and then four SATA hard drives. So first things first, when we do look at the board itself is the white has gone. Because on the previous generation, the heat sinks and the, there was a lot of white on the board. So now we've come into a kind of, it's kind of industrial and almost robotic looking, uh, silver, gunmetal grey and black sort of thing. And when you look at it up close, you'll see what I mean about it being kind of robotic or maybe even a sort of aircraft. Now the white panel sections, if you're good boys and girls, I might show you lit up in a bit, but you do get two uh, M.2s there without a cover and this is a heat sink cover over the top. And then if we're, while we're at this kind of angle, we can have a look at the power phases and you can see that there are plenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten around the uh, CPU socket there. So that, that's going to be all for the CPU. Any ex external ones like these ones are going to be the separate ones. Uh, for the memory, there you go, we can see some more power phases over here for the memory. But anyway, up here, uh, you can see that there's an uh, 8 pin. You can also see that there's a fan connected. A fan connected? Already? Where is it, Thomas? Well, it's hidden in there. Uh, and essentially, I do know that unless your uh, VRMs get to 90 degrees, it will never spin. Uh, and only at that point will it spin. I'm not sure what load the CPUs are going to be putting on yet, but we do have two large heat sinks. So um, it, only time and testing is going to tell. Uh, I'm not even sure whether saying the VRM numbers are gonna get me into trouble because I have to be very careful with what I say around the NDA. Um, but if we go around the board looking for connections, got two fan connections here. There is an RGBW connection up there as you can see there. This will light up, we'll show you all this in a minute. Fan connection there, USB 3.1, USB 3. Coming further down, you can see there's six SATA. There is an external fan connector there. You can also see down here, look, fan pump. And then you've also got two other um, fans there. PCI readout, two USB 2s on the bottom, lovely jubbly. Then you've also got another RGB connector there. You can also see there's connectors for like front panel audio and stuff. I can't remember where I'm meant to plug my magic cable for the lights. Uh, maybe it is that one, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it is that one. Sorry, you're off screen. Um, you can see that we've got some Wema caps there for the audio as well as some Japanese capacitors there. Amp up audio. 
Uh, that's also what you can use for amp, your amp up audio because those yellow ports are the uh, what they call the DAC up port. So they're this very clean and stable power. Something I do like about this board compared to some of the other ones I've seen so far is there is only a HDMI and a display port on. Some of the other boards have got a massive uh, DVI connector on as well. Now, some people may want a DVI, but it's getting to the point that it is starting to get phased out and you can easily get an adapter to go from this to your DVI if you need it anyway. But if you're buying a board that's this expensive and then needing to plug an onboard DVI in, um, with the price of like low price graphics cards and stuff like that. It, yeah, it, it, it's definitely something that we could debate over a pint in the pub. Anyway, you get two um, Ethernets on there, USB-C there, which is nice. Gold plated connectors, gold plated connectors, PS2. It's all good. Or is it? So here we are, all lit up. Now I have no control over what the lights are doing. This is just a demo show mode and I have a magic cable to be able to uh, do this. It's actually one that I might have lifted from a show that I went to now. They knew I was taking it, but they're, they're quite hard to get hold of. Um, so this is just for me to be able to show you where all the lighting points are. But the things that I do like is if you have a look at the PCR Express connectors, they've actually got lights, if we zoom in, in and around them now like the, because you've got them between the memory slots, as you can see, and they've now done something similar around the PCI Express ports. Now I kind of like that. Um, it's not something I was prepared to like. Uh, there's something I don't like, which is kind of normal for me, and that's the design of the top VRM heatsink. Uh, I don't think that really goes with any of the other stuff on the board, it's almost like they run out of ideas. Um, but you know, that's just that's literally just me being picky and looking for something to talk about. The design down the side has been something that they've been doing for a while. I think it's second or third generation we've seen this now. And you can actually remove it and you can customize it as well. So you could put your own um, uh, like rig specs down the side or name and stuff. I will say though, that it's not been something that I've seen particularly readily advertised. I've not, I, I've had a look, you know, like a scan a couple of times, and I mean like a look around the internet a couple of times to see if they were easily available to buy um, plain or find someone that was pre-doing them, and I've not seen anything. So maybe that's something Gigabyte can kind of take on the chin and try and get sorted out. There's no lights or anything round on the back section, and there's nothing round on the back of the board either. And the, the fact that uh, we've only got the magic cable in does give us a really nice insight and being able to spin it around as well. I do like the chipset though, because you've got the little line up at the top here, which you can see. There's another one down on the bottom. And then, yeah, chipset heatsink. I do kind of like that. Some people would say it's a bit Christmas tree, but we're gonna to have to hope that you can turn off individual uh, points this time rather than what was normally the case where you turn the middle off and everything in the middle goes off and then you have that and that on the outside. So quite clearly we're not going to want that. But anyway, peeps, that has been our early look. Don't forget what I said, this I've got no control over the light cycle, it's just in a demo mode. Um, you're going to have to come back and watch the main review on the 5th of October if you want to know about performance and any more of an insight into the board. But for now at least...